everybody, Jeff, a.k.a. G. Chris here. I hope you're all having a great Sunday evening. It is currently 4.21 p.m. Well, it's not really Sunday evening, I guess. But by the time I get this done processing and uploading, it definitely will be the evening. How are you all doing? My name is Jeff, a.k.a. G. Chris, and I have another edition of G. Chris Reacts DSP Edition. This is actually part two of the DSP gaming documentary that came out last week from June the King. Uh, just due to the size of this video, along with me working, uh, returning to work uh, now, I can't do everything in one fell swoop. So I've broken this into multiple parts. This is part two. And basically we're gonna be picking up where uh, we left off in part one. Uh, basically, I think if I remember correctly, part one, we ended off with uh, kind of the uh, Project 7 debacle. And we're going to be hearing about that pretty damn quick. In fact, before we do, as always, you like what you're watching? I hope that you are. Feel free to click that subscribe button, click the bell and the like. And we, we're going to get on to the show now. So let's switch over. So basically, we... Uh, there, I think this is where uh, the introduction of Respect the Pack came in. So let's get right to it, shall we? Wait, hold on. Why did it do that? Hold on, that's weird. Okay, hold on. Let's see. P? He should be play. Hold on. They don't want... Oh, that's they, weird. they don't want any money after this. Based yeah. on what he says, they told him that. Yeah. And then I asked him about it, and they said he didn't even talk to them. Phil was bold-faced lying. Okay, I'm just gonna put. I'm just testing this because I don't know why it switches over to another scene. Hold on, let me just try it again. Lying to his two friends. Okay, well, there it goes. This okay. was already on top of other compounding, smaller problems like Phil's jealousy of larger content creators and how he would lash out, creating unwanted attention towards his channel or just himself. Comments would sometimes spark jealousy of his friends and would create a response from Phil. Case in point, in this teaser trailer, there's a funny scene featuring John Rambo, and everyone says it's the best part of the trailer, and I even saw a comment saying, wow, this is, this is, Rambo's the funniest thing. Guess what? I wrote that scene. And why should we care who wrote it? It was actually funny. As long as it was funny, who cares who wrote it? You know, like, I'm not, I don't, I don't know all the lore but behind it. But Phil, should, he should just take pride in the fact that people thought the joke was funny. Nonetheless, who, uh, who you know, wrote it or anything, you know, who cares who wrote it? As long as the joke, uh, as long as the joke landed, then that's all that really matters. But then again, this is Phil Burnell we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Phil needs to make himself the, basically, he needs to make himself the, uh, center of the attention. If, if... He's not the center of that attention. He got to let us know. And that's kind of like what he was doing with John Rambo. He Phil knew Phil knows that John Rambo made everything that we liked. Yeah. You know? Now when I say made, I'm not talking about like physically, you know, the videos. I'll give Phil credit. A lot of the gameplay videos is him. But uh John Rambo, he added he made those videos that he appeared in. He made those special if it was just, you know, Bill Burnell and a couple other uh, people doing that shit, it probably wouldn't have been as awesome as it was when, if, uh, like it would be if John Rambo was in it. John Rambo was what really, thought, he was the heart of soul and soul of Project 6. Uh, he was the heart and soul of Project 6, and that's what really pisses Phil off, because no matter what... Uh, no matter what he tried, he always knew that people really liked John Rambo more. Okay. These small, inconsequential things would add up slowly and drive a rift between DSP and John Rambo. Like when DSP lied about John Rambo not wanting to play Mario Party. I start getting messages, and people are, are pissy. Oh, it's not mature enough for you, you piece, big nose piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Everything eventually circles back. 
Fail at first would pay John Rambo 50% of all the earnings in the Let's Plays he was involved in, but as it becomes more difficult to calculate their earnings with DSP's expansive catalog of videos, instead he would just toss him $100 every time he visited. But also a virtual... Now keep in mind, this was for every time John Rambo visited. It wasn't just like John Rambo was just coming a couple of houses down. John Rambo had commute. Commute takes time. Commute takes gas. Gas takes money. And keep in mind, he was doing all of this, and he was only getting, what, a $100? How much of that money was left by the time John Rambo got home? Sorry to say it, Phil ripped off his best friend. And no matter what Phil fucking says, the three people, well, I want to say two people in the group, the two people that were horrendously treated bad during this time was John Rambo and Howard, and then Respect the Pack got totally shit on. Actually, every time he did visit, DSP would move things towards wanting to record more Let's Plays rather than hang out outside the realm of YouTube. This all relates to the 2012 condo. From these repeat visits, John and Howard noticed many changes that really just amounted to additions, like at least BMW. We start showing up to your house and what do we see? The guy starts buying figurines, starts buying all this ridiculous shit that there's no need to buy. Then we show up to his house one day and what does he have in a fucking driveway? A BMW. So how the fuck do you think I feel and how do you think these guys feel after the fact? What upset me was I watched uh, Bill Burnell's reaction to this video uh, earlier this week. And by the way, I have all those videos downloaded, so I'm going to be doing a react to his react in the in the future sometime his you can literally hear it in phil burnell's voice he has utter contempt for howard as much as phil burnell says i respected those guys and i i gave them what i you know what you know i gave them money he had utter contempt for for howard keep in mind howard was helping phil burnell with this uh with project seven it was it as uh was his interaction as you know as vastly as John Rambo's? I don't know. I'd have to go back and rewatch the project again to to try to see exactly how much John Ram uh, how much Howard uh how much of an impact he had. However, if Phil you know and I I, I believe I believe John Rambo and I believe Howard over the uh, over Phil Burnell any day of the any day of the uh, week. I can only imagine the rage that Howard and John Rambo possibly felt knowing that they are being screwed by you know here's a hundred dollars for for hours of work and you see this piece of shit. Rolling up in a BMW. This, this this is nothing new, ladies and gentlemen. Phil Burnell has always been wasteful with his money. Look no further than WWE champions. He he gets money in his pocket and it burns a hole. That's all it is. This, so like this, this this is nothing new, and I I can you know I would feel the same way. Wait a minute. You're giving me a hundred dollars to help you with your sh with your project. You can't even give me a guaranteed amount of money because you don't want to do the fucking work to see how much of you know how much like the videos are pulling in or whatever. But you can roll up in a fucking BMW. Oh, I'd be fucking pissed. DSP was spending ever more frivolously. In contrast to his 2011 40 minute condo tour, this new condo tour took a total of 1 hour, 8 minutes, and 27 seconds. On the surfaces of his apartments, sands some of the walls and ceilings, it became a challenge to now find a square inch of clear space. There was even an update on the corner, now wall full of boxes and trash. It's now quickly become a graveyard of shit. Why the fuck does he have a... Th uh Shouldn't that oil be either in the garage, if there's a garage, or in the car? Why the fuck does he have a, an, you know, possibly an empty thing of oil in his apartment? Or, or his condo, I'm sorry, his condo. That I can't either, I have nowhere to put, I have no use for, I can't store, I, I don't know what to do with it, alright? DSP had run out of storage for his baubles and memorabilia. I don't know, it's too much, too much! 
And the problem is I have nowhere to put this shit. If I had somewhere to put it or sort it, I'd probably be able to see it, but it's all just a jumbled mess on top of my dresser. I need more room. His closet, even with items optimally stored, was overfilled. What I want to look at is just to show you what a mess the inside of my... Phil Burnell, I've, I've been kind of thinking about it while I'm, we were, we've been watching this. Phil Burnell is a prime example of what happens when you let money and fame get to your head. You let money and fame get to your head, you get a condo full of useless shit. How much of this garbage does he actually uh, display in his current uh, residence? And the answer is none. So not only did he waste a shit ton of money on useless fucking statues and little baubles, as June said, but he, I think, didn't he get rid of a lot of this stuff? Didn't he get rid of a lot of this stuff? Yeah, I think he may have sold some of it. I'm pretty sure a lot of this stuff was just thrown out was just thrown out and uh uh but sorry about that somebody messaged me but uh yeah so not only did he waste money he got rid of a lot of stuff and that money you know it, what a waste of money what a waste of money that's the one thing i can say i i actually take pride in what i have i know you can't really see it but back here i have a, a shelf that i just put up recently and there are some boxes that have transformers in them. I haven't opened them up because I just don't have time with work. But the thing is, it's I take pride in what I have. Phil, I really get the feeling he just bought stuff. Not because he really lo loves the stuff, but it's just basically because he had money and he wanted to throw money at the stuff. It's like, oh, I got money. What can I get? Oh, BMW? Okay. Street Fighter statue? Hey, fine. You know, he doesn't have a grasp of uh how of how fleeting money can be if he actually had uh if he actually had that that ability to see that money doesn't last forever i'm pretty sure he'd be in a better place now fucking closet is i'm not gonna go all the way because my luggage is actually spilling out but look at all the boxes i've got from the mom wait a minute wait a minute wait, wait a minute what the fuck was that hold on hold on hold on let's go back hold on let's, let's models phil did not value or understand money except when it came to others phil hold on. ah there was something there closet, i wanted to even see with it. items optimally stored was overfilled what i want to look at is I thought I saw a blow-up doll. I want, to, I want to see, is this a blow-up doll? Hold on. Just to show you what a mess the inside of my fucking closet is. I'm not going to go all the way. Okay, what the fuck is this thing at the, on the bottom left? Is that a fucking blow-up doll? Phil! Phil! What would the soulmate think if she found out you had a blow-up doll? You should be ashamed of yourself. I know it's probably not a blow-up doll, but I'm just giving him a fucking hard time. Phil, you should be ashamed of yourself. Because my luggage is actually spilling out, but look at all the boxes I've got from the models. Phil did not value or understand money, except when it came to others. Phil, when talking about Project 7, classifies it as a financial loss for the t-shirts he helped finance and more importantly the props they bought. This prop that Howard is holding is a Lancer from the game Gears of War and cost $300. It had less $300. than 30 seconds of screen time. $300! Holy fucking shit! He couldn't just go to fucking Walmart and buy a couple fucking little toy guns. No, he had to spend three hundred dollars on something that was only in this video for what a few seconds. I think he's uh, June's about to say it. And was even less relevant to the plot. Yet was the majority of shared expenses. He would use this and other items to try to convince viewers and friends that Project Seven was not profitable, disregarding his egregious spending habits. Yeah, it's it's more about yeah, it's more about. So, like I said, he he. It isn't that he just, he, he doesn't respect his money. Okay, I can use this for a couple seconds. Here's $300. After he's, after he's done using it, what, what then? Gaming quilts. Wow, holy fucking shit. Another waste of money. ...of $1,000. How much was Phil earning? The good news is this, okay? I am an intelligent person. I am a finance major. I went to... An intelligent person, finance major, had to claim bankruptcy. I'm sorry, call me cynical, call me old-fashioned. But if you're a business major, maybe you should fucking know how to use your money better.
But then again, this is the same guy who's currently begging people for money. Business major, ladies and gentlemen. Business major, begging for money. School for finance. I knew day one when I started making money off of YouTube that I was going to bank it. I was not going to go out there and invest in things that I couldn't get money out of. I'm still here in the... Do you imagine how better off he could have been if he actually did invest in stocks or something? Now, granted, I don't invest because I'm... Everybody in my family, my family has a, a long history of people dying of heart attacks. My mom died of a heart attack. Her mo mo mother died with a, of a heart attack. Her sister died of a heart attack. Several aunts died of a heart attack. I know I'm going to die of a heart attack. So I'm not really investing that much because I know sooner or later I'm going to die. But Bill here, he had a chance to literally... And another reason why I don't is because of the fact that I'm not a I'm not an uber uh, popular YouTuber that is getting a shit ton of money either. Uh, hold on, guys. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back, guys. Sorry about that. I had something I had to take care of, so let's continue on. Condo. I didn't go out and buy a, a super... Oh, that's right. We were talking about investments. He had, he had a chance... To invest in some pretty worthwhile things back then he could have invested in tesla tesla apparently they're always making a profit he, if phil did little things correctly can you imagine how well off he would have been now for over expensive house and i didn't go out and buy a sports car yes i am driving a bmw but it's actually a lot more economical than people really think on DSP Gaming alone, for the year of 2012, he got 85.19 million views. Div I would die just to get 10% of, you know, uh, let's say a year's worth of views like that. That's one thing Phil does. He, just like money, he does not realize what he had when it came to YouTube. He did not realize, you know, how special he was. He was special, and I'm not talking about, like, in a condescending way, either. Bill Burnell, he was able to, you know, to the people he was able to fool, he was able to, uh, he was able to get people to like him. And he threw it all away, like the money. He throws everything away. He does not realize exactly what it is that he has. Look at this. 85.19 million views that's that you know that's not just 85.19 views period 85.19 million and he fucking throw it away he fucking threw it away Dividing that by 1,000 is 85,190. Multiplying that by $2, not 225, which it could sometimes be, but $2 as a base CPM for Machinima, excluding the possibility of bonuses, would mean that he made a gross of $170,380 for 2012. Oh my god, I would die! I would die to have that kind of money! Holy shit! I could, I, oh my god, there is so much I could do in the community if I actually had that kind of money. Holy shit. 2012, my views really have dwindled. And what I mean is, I believe in the year of 2011, I probably got somewhere over like 10 to 11 million views uh, on DSP Gaming. And then in 2012, I only barely reached like 8.5 million or something like that. I don't think the final number is in yet. DSP lied and understates his views by nearly tenfold. Not only is this proven incorrect by archives such as Social Blade, this is proven incorrect directly on his own YouTube channel where there are screenshots from the start of 2012 to the beginning of 2013 that shows he got nearly 90 million views. It was also here that Phil was toting his financial responsibility. You don't see me here with super expensive clothes on or anything, and you don't see me wearing jewelry and shit. You know, I'm smart. I've banked my money. So, regardless of what happens in this next year, I'm still okay. So I just want everyone to understand that. Phil was ever confident that, even though he was now riding a downward trend, he could survive. His tune would change in the coming months as he would have to navigate troubles that were exclusive to him and the culture he was inadvertently creating. What could be the two reasons? There are two underlying reasons why he would have made this, this video. Come on! So I didn't want to fucking restart the game. Number one, 
He's just insanely jealous of me. Hey, it's not my fault. I love it. <laughs> the other is that the guy is one of these gamers, like I mentioned, who play the games to feel accomplishment. What the fuck? What? On February 15, 2013, YouTube user EvilAJ2010, in direct response to Phil claiming his videos are well received, uploaded a compilation of Phil's Metal Gear Solid 2 playthroughs with only the clips of his failures or this is one thing that always gets me. Even even when he acknowledges that he has detractors, he acts like nobody hates him. Even though he will go and talk about detractors at length. Oh, people love me. No, they don't, Phil. We're proof of that. Capture the negative yet entertaining aspects of Phil, AJ was succeeding. A month later, in March, his video was up to 77,000 views, and word was spreading. DSP is a weird guy. It's like a train wreck that you can't look away from that's on every day 10 times a day. 24 hours. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. The reason Evil AJ's video was so successful was both external to Metal Gear Solid and internal. The external elements that bring interest are that DSP has continuously bled viewers through his lack of editing, refusal to use a capture card, and poor gameplay. The elements that are internal and why Metal Gear Solid was the perfect game to capture the essence of Phil is foremost that Kojima, the person that heads the creation of the series, is well respected within the gaming community as are his creations. The Metal Gear Solid series chiefly requires critical thinking as it is required to appropriately employ every item in your arsenal, as well as to react quickly in tense situations. It also requires patience to be able to learn See, this is the kind of the problem with Phil Burnell. Even to this day, Phil Burnell needs, feels the need to literally kind of, uh, to pump out the most content. If he actually took time and researched and played the game, you know, researched and did play the game, I'm pretty sure he'd get a lot more views because if people want to see a thorough and well-crafted playthrough. But Phil Burnell, it's more like, it's more about just get out, get out, get out the content. Gotta get out multiple games get, get multiple games that's it's been shown that there are streamers and content creators that can focus on one game for a long time and make a shit ton of money i've seen people play on twitch for example just constantly play uh metal gear for example over and over and over or there is oh a streamer i can't recall what his name is but he will cycle through all of the resident evil games they will play, you know, he'll start with the very first Resident Evil game all the way up to the most recent one, which is uh, Village, if I remember correctly. And he makes money. It, it, if Phil did this, he could be in a better place, but no, he doesn't. Do you always see the same people in all oh, related videos, featured videos? For the, the person who's not at the tippy top, it's so hard for people to get noticed now on YouTube. Oh, were you expecting something else? The irony is that Phil's accumulated viewership was influencing the algorithm to keep advertising his content. The loss of viewership was because people were familiar with what he produced and stayed away from it despite YouTube pushing it. There's the kind of person who would say, oh no, I lost views, stop my feet, oh man, man, man. But I would say, no, I'm going to stay positive, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Phil was losing viewership and supporters. Chris, or Mighty Furtado, the 18-year-old that co-made DSP's website and was responsible for building his computer, actually had a falling out with DSP. Starting with Chris calling DSP lazy for initially not wanting to adapt to... He is. He, well, he's, well, he is still lazy, but he was lazy back then also. ...and stopped supporting DSP, leaving DSP to purchase the domain back. Whenever I tried to help, he kind of just shot on me for it. So at that point, I was like, why am I going to support somebody who I've been trying to help for so many years? You know, I co-created him a website, co-created his forms, co-built his gaming PC. I've helped him so much. And when I try to help him try to adapt to direct capture, he he's not kind of really taking the suggestions from myself as well as everybody else in the chat during that time. It doesn't end there. With Chris now persona non grata, DSP made extreme claims without evidence about the price of the PC Chris had built. Chris, not pleased with this, made a video in response. He had made a video basically stating that he has sent us apparently $3,000, and that wasn't the case. The actual amount a DSP paid for the PC, as shown through Chris's receipt and a few hundred dollars extra that was sent, was off by a maliciously large margin. So I had actually made my own video defending myself. So Phil lied. Who would have thought? 
a guy who, you know, Phil has a track history of lying, going all the way up till recently with the uh, WWE champions. Who would have thought that he would have lied back then? You know, like... It turns out Chris paid for the shipping out of pocket. We actually paid an additional 150 from out of pocket from my side just to ship the computer. That may have been the last of his direct interactions with Phil, but not with others that post him. A portion of Chris's second video is in defense of Evil AJ, even showing that he was in communication with him. And then there were videos coming out supporting Chris. Very recently, there's been a lot of videos that have been coming out on YouTube about Darkseid Phil exposing him or whatever. Uh, the one that really got me was the one that was made by Chris, um, of Chris and Teo, who designed Darkseid Phil's website for free and built him a computer. There was a rising community of support, one that was built on the common dislike of Phil. The threads were being intertwined in such a way that new channels making This Is How You Don't Plays would sometimes pay homage to Evil AJ. Like, there are people doing, doing walkthroughs of this game and they just easily jump up here, and I can't do it at all. Look, I can't fucking jump up here. See, this is a good example where Phil just likes to rush through games. In the very beginning, it talks about Crouch Jump. There was like a little blurb at the, uh, at the, I think it was the upper left corner about Crouch Jump. The thing is, if Phil actually took the time and he, he, here, let me pause it. If Phil actually said, hey guys, I'm having problems here. Can either someone, was this before he was streaming? I think this may have been before he was streaming. Okay, let's say that he goes, I'm going to stop recording real quick. I'm going to go on to YouTube. And I'm going to see if somebody knows what this crouch jump is. But did Phil do that? No. Phil does not research anything. And because of that, he got bitter. He got angry. And he started attacking the game developers, if I remember correctly, about the, the crouch jump. It could have been all avoided if he just simply slowed down instead of having to feel the need to constantly pump out content, pump out content. Jump! You won't even jump, look. Jump! You fucking idiot! Okay, Whew. Viewers were quickly realizing that DSP, with his near four years on YouTube, had a treasure trove of videos to sift through and inspire compilations or different forms of content. Whether it was Pandalee's abrasive personality and dislike of the Kingdom Hearts series, I'm here trying to play a fucking game, it's hard to concentrate when a bunch of little immature shits get into a fucking argument with my girlfriend. Fuck you. A DSP soundboard, I remember actually uh, sitting in on that Twitch uh, stream when he went off on his viewers like that. I did, I knew this is how he was from back in 2009. The sad thing is, is that the same people who, in 2009 who were telling me, oh, you're just a jealous hater. Uh, you know, you're just a jealous hater, go, go get a life. Uh, they were then treated this way. And here I am like, yep. How does it feel now? You don't like it now, do you? You know. Man child. A video that covers Phil's newly released 2013 condo tour that shows just how much worse his living space has gotten. This is what has happened to my condo in the past year. I've gotten so much stuff that my condo just can't... Cons look at this. Look at this. Look, look at this! Look at the floor! Look at this! It's a fucking hideous mess. And I wish, I really wish that I had somewhere to put this shit, but I don't tied to this was the curiosity about DSP's expenditures. In 2013 alone, he took at least four trips. Every one of them, he paid for at least one additional person, whether it was John Rambo or Pan Lee, sometimes both. The reason this was becoming irrelevant was because of DSP's focus on his decline of views and earnings. His critics could be just as excessive with their own commentary. Have you been on uh, Darkseid Phil's stream when he fucking flips out of people yeah. using adblock? <laughs> but how you're rob- it's like going into his house and robbing him and taking all his shit. Did you find out where he lives and rob him? Like, I got to go to his house and like him. Man, you're taking my money! That's just like if you use adblock on one of my videos! But you know what'd be great? You could really take some lessons if you went into his house and lynched him. 4chan was also in on this, creating green text that accompanied other memes. As to only help the building tension, DSP set out on attacking other creators whose channels towered over his own. Holy shit! 
another YouTuber who's not a giant fucking Tobuscus PewDiePie idiot who loves gaming, is doing it for the love of gaming, and he's actually showing up in my fucking related channels. PewDiePie's channel had over 100 times the subscribers that Phil had, and there was no doubt that they shared viewers, so these comments assured that those viewers would not return to Phil. What's more is that Phil would talk about how big of a fan PewDiePie was of him. Yeah, that's right. PewDiePie has said he was inspired by me to make videos. He used to watch my content back when he had no money to buy games. He would watch me play the games. That's how he got the idea to make his content. PewDiePie did, in fact, like some of DSP's videos back in 2011. Though as Phil's barrage continued, PewDiePie would have a change in opinion. As for now, the... Which is normal. Everybody who has dealt with Phil has had a change of opinion. I'm not going to lie. I was a fan of Phil Burnell's uh, in 2000, from 2007 to early 2009 when I had my interaction with him. It, I'm not saying that people never like Phil. We all like Phil at some point. However, Phil's own attitude is what chases people away. People don't just leave and become detractors. No, they don't. Phil's irreprehensible behavior is what creates the detractors. The other leading channel that he was personally at odds with was Tobuscus, who launched his own gaming channel. On top of that, he promoted NCAA Football 2013, and his video on it was used as an advertisement for the game on YouTube. Phil displeased with what he perceived as YouTube advertising his competitors was quick to make a rant on it. And here's why I'm upset. I'm not upset that he's advertising the game. That's fine. It's even a gaming-related ad. I understand why it's on my video. But at the end of the fucking ads, there's a link to his channel. Phil was thoroughly lambasting entertainers and games that his audience enjoyed. Games that were rising in popularity like Minecraft for its lack of story. This made the rounds so much that even the creator of Minecraft commented on it. Because of DSP's rapid decline, there was inversely a lucrative market to make content criticizing DSP. A group of creators would soon fly a banner that would be seen across various channels. The Kojima World Order, or the KWO, was the unifying group for what was being called troll or detractor channels. The origin of the name came from Phil himself and his criticisms of Kojima. I'm joining the Kojima World Order as of right now. Everything that Kojima has made is godlike, without question. You know, I can never figure out what his hatred for Kojima was. So the guy likes to make uh, highly detailed uh, cutscenes. Is that really something to be hated upon? Like, what is this guy's... What is this guy's hatred of Kojima? Like, really? Dark Side Phil here, and welcome to Release Day Unboxing for Tuesday, February 11th, 2014. And before everyone says what on earth is going on, you probably hear an incredibly annoying, high-pitched droning sound going on. That is the fire alarm in my condo facility. And the problem is, the fire alarm in this condo facility has a nasty habit of during the middle of the winter, especially when it's very cold, of going off as a malfunction. That was from DSP's release date unboxing video. The first three minutes, Phil is talking about the ongoing fire alarm. Then he shifts to criticizing prior games. Then to the fire alarm, and then DSP picks up the camera, takes it to the door, and shows his stuffed paper towels. The best box opening ever, ladies and gentlemen, am I right? DSP failed to open and quote-unquote unbox the game. <laughs> <laughs> this screenshot, which included DSP's comment realizing his mistake tied to the title of the video, is what DSP was now known for. And and I love what Jer Dream, or however you pronounce his name, uh, posted. Then why even post this? Exactly. Why even fucking post? Oh, that's right. He wanted money. He wanted money. He wanted money. That's all that it was. How the fuck do you do a box opening video? without even opening the goddamn box. Though few videos of his own rarely capture this entertainment from failure in such a way. What's up, boss? <laughs> Is it time? As predictable as Phil was in the gaming space with his commentary, his decisions, especially the financial ones, were seldom predictable. Phil, mid-2014, finally committed to move. 
Some discernible reasons for our move were mainly tied to having a larger living space allowing for more storage, and would give Phil and Panda Lee their own space as they were seeking to move in together. Common strategies would suggest Phil would either sell or rent his condo and then move in somewhere close by. This would allow easy access to the condo for maintenance. The social elements are as important like his friends and family that were all living in Bridgeport. With this in mind, what does Phil do? I got the confirmation over the weekend that we are good to go. We are closing this week. By the end of this week, I will be the owner of a beautiful new townhouse slash condo in Washington State. It's probably going to cost me about $7,500. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, he was already on a decline when it came to his uh, revenue from YouTube. Or was this after the... Yeah, I think this was after the whole click the ads but this is with machinima if i remember correctly either way he was still having mo money uh decline issues was it really the good uh, the best thing to do to move across the fucking country no it wasn't 2012 this indicates continued loss of revenue and pressure to pull back on spending and even though phil should have money saved up he was still petitioning his audience for donations right now I'll be honest with everyone the past month to two months april and now may up to now have been pretty slow but, you know, I needed a little bit of help in these times when things are slow, okay? The situation he was revealing was far more dire than initially thought. Phil was technically still in debt as he paid the minimum on his mortgage for his Connecticut condo. And as later revealed, Phil, as he claims, emptied his bank account to finance a move, meaning somehow the hundreds of thousands of dollars he should have saved were supposedly gone. In addition to this, he began using credit cards to continue his lavish lifestyle that was far beyond unsupportable. Quote, I'm a successful YouTuber and lots of people dislike me because I am successful and outspoken. I should have signed up here with a different name, but I didn't think that far ahead. I may do so now. Unquote. Signing up for something without realizing uh, the long-term repercussions. Doesn't that sound like the WWE champions? This was Phil, in a form for the mobile game WWE Supercard, which is essentially a collectible card game of sorts with an emphasis on microtransactions themed around the well-known American wrestling organization. Quote, I just got my second in the Hulk Hogan challenge and spent around $200. For $1,200, I think, you can buy a pack of 1,500 title matches, which is enough to win the event doing straight plus fives. Unquote. The jargon around the game was hardly interesting to any detractor. What was, was Phil's knowledge of the cost of items and his spendings of potentially thousands of real-life dollars in a time he supposedly did not have any money to spend. Yet, he was financing Panda Lee's new soap-making business. Phil also renewed the lease on a BMW that he would drive at most 2,000 miles a year. Evidence of Phil's poor spending had been mounting for some time, but never has it been this overwhelming. Uh, once my equipment shows up, my new PC, I'm hoping to get to work with higher quality. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we asked him to get a capture card, not three. <laughs> he got a total of three capture cards, ladies and gentlemen, when he could have just got one. To test them out, the comments discussed the absurdity of Phil's purchases. Quote, lol. So he ordered one capture card, changed his mind, and bought another. Then changed his mind again and bought another, all before the first could even be delivered? You got more <laughs> money than cents, or your credit card debt is rising. Wouldn't it be worth doing some research before buying them? Dude. Doing research in, in, uh, implies that Phil knows how to, to do work and stuff. Bought a new, pre-built PC from CyberPower within the week of the capture card video and did the unboxing live, taking his chance to mock the PC Mighty Furtada built for him by stating, This is how you do ship a PC. <laughs> We're already a broken piece of plastic. Already a broken piece of plastic. That might be why the top is moving. It's the post that goes through that holds this in place broke off in shipping. The price of the PC was $3,000. Here it is in action. What the hell? The game's choppy as fuck on my new PC. Great. So he didn't know that there was an option to switch from encoding with your CPU and encoding with your GPU. Like, he just didn't know how to use his PC. The freaking Mac... Wait a minute, you can do that? I'll be honest, I don't know jack shit about PCs, but then again, unlike Phil, I never claimed to be a PC expert and put PCs together, you know, 
I didn't know you could actually do that. I didn't even know, you know, I'll be honest, I didn't even know what a GPU is. I know what a CPU is, but not a GPU. But having any formal education or even general competence in the field. As for the exorbitant spending on equipment, DSP could cite that he was trying to improve the quality of his streams and also deduct the purchases for taxes, but he was ignoring the fact that gaming content was being improved by editing the unnecessary parts out. Phil was still refusing to do this. His cited reason, he was a gamer. Quote, I'm a gamer, not a video editor, entertainer, actor. I like to play games, not edit videos of them. Unquote. His choice of trying to improve the visual quality and not the experience of his streams was turning around to bite him at every angle. In November of 2014, a Twitch mod jumped into Phil's streams requesting he lower his bitrate. This is basically asking him to lower the quality. While Phil complied, he was unhappy with the outcome, especially with all the money he invested in improving the visual quality. In an act of defiance, Phil deleted his Twitch account, opting to stream on YouTube where he would not be burdened with Twitch's limitations. This move that was meant to increase viewership via higher quality streams actually had Phil lose viewership as few Twitch native users were loyal enough to migrate. Phil was now going from- All Phil had to do was literally just kind of put his ego to the side for a little bit. This was an ego play for him. He-, he Phil feels that he has to be the best at everything. And when literally Twitch told him, hey, Phil, turn the shit down, his ego couldn't handle it. The thing is, I have a, I have a personal belief that as long as the content creator is funny, the viewers don't really care if the product looks, you know, pristine. If the content creator is funny and relatable and likable, maybe that's the same thing, relatable and likable. Anyway. I feel that, you know, the, the, the viewers will kind of look past some of the flaws. Blunder to blunder, miscalculating, misunderstanding, failing only in ways he could. For example, he allegedly launched a fan art campaign. The participants on Twitter gleefully joined in and shared their art. Only they weren't fans. This contrast, this continued failure was too much to even be documented. There was a nuance to DSP's thought process that was demanding exploration and criticism, especially when, in December of 2014, Phil was playing with the idea of starting a Patreon. But also in December, he was making more vlogs showing his continued poor spending habits that were discourteous even to his parents that Phil set up in a hotel instead of having them stay in the condo. My parents are visiting for the Christmas week holiday and they actually took the car. That's right. I let them take the BMW. So yeah, that's a lot of trust, but I trust my parents. They actually are staying at a hotel that's less than 10 minutes away. Lovely son, huh? Hey, mom and dad, you traveled across the country to see your own son. It's it's Christmas holidays coming up. Happy Christmas, mom and dad. I love you. Now get the fuck out. I'm putting you up at a hotel. What kind of fucking son does that to his own parents? Holy fucking shit. If the argument is, well, Phil probably didn't have a spare bedroom. Phil could have been a nice person and let his mom and dad sleep in his bedroom. Phil could have slept on the couch. That's what I would do if my parents visited. If my mom was still alive, you know, and be like, hey, mom, you're coming over. Oh, you're coming over? Hey, awesome. I can't wait to see you come over. I'll, I'll sleep in the living room. You can sleep in the bedroom. Why would I say that? Because I respect my parents enough. I wouldn't put them up at a fucking hotel. They came here to see their son, not stay in a fucking hotel. We got him up. We set him up at room and board. It's a nice hotel that has a big suite. It's got its own actively watching dsp who was streaming around six times a week for several hours at a time was no small feat what started as a laughing at phil's terrible gameplay had turned into a higher investment into his continuing dramas this tumblr tries to capture the drama in 2014 from this magazine that states phil whines about losing a lot to phil spending and conflict with creators like pewdiepie who was now in on making fun of phil Phil's e-begging, conflicts, foreign drama, a list of over 2,000 words that most shocking fact was that it was still missing a fair amount of Phil's exploits. To capture it all and understand it all for entertainment was a process that loses its entertainment value. The majority of people are only interested in the wildest clips of Phil. Then you have those that watch hour-long This Is How You Don't Plays, then those that interact with Phil to try to get a rise from him and seek discussion of him. And then you have an entirely different people, one that tops the spectrum of investment and are not motivated by entertainment, but malice. The following announcement 
has been paid for by the SOK. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the SOK cast. If you guys okay, so this is the one thing I do not agree with, and I will say this all the time I do not encourage any sort of uh. Any, any sort of illegal activity against Phil. Phil Burnell is not worthy of you going to jail for. If you think that, you know, hacking Phil, hacking his internet, getting his bank records or whatever, if you think that's okay, just, you know, be careful because of the fact that it's illegal. If you get caught, you're looking at some harsh sentences there, dude. Is it really worth going to prison for, to to get one over on a fucking e beggar, you know. Granted, I make these videos, but I don't hack the guy. I don't hack the guy. I don't dox the guy. Phil has already doxed himself, no matter what he wants to say. I I prefer a more passive way to to you know to 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 be a detractor. As tier of investment in terms of Phil. They reached an extremely niche audience in an already superbly niche environment. Where the majority of videos were made to laugh at Phil's failures, the Sons of Kojima was trying to interact with Phil and in many ways make his life worse. On the surface, they will promote what they believed was their moral superiority by leading a charity drive that funded the construction of a well in Africa. But they, mostly through Fred Fuck's will, attempted to dictate detractor communities beyond their own. They made the rule that detractors cannot monetize their channels and or make profit through Phil as to remain morally superior. Yet they, in the background, would work with others to strike Phil with illegitimate copyright strikes. Fan art played a central role in this campaign. In 2015, the Sons of Kojima ran free, and it's difficult to say how many trolling campaigns they were launching during this time. A time where Phil's views, for now the third year straight in 2015, were on a steep decline. The trolling community was active like never before, and Phil continued to suffer from the ramifications of his terrible financial decisions. Possibly to offset his continued losses, Phil was committed to launching this Patreon. But there was an issue. There was already a dark side Phil Patreon. This had many subscription tiers. On the lowest side was a dollar, or this is how you don't donate tier. On the highest <laughs> end was the 7 million tier, or the theft tier. And between these were 15 more tiers littered with inside jokes Holy making fun shit. of Phil. This parody Patreon, as it reserved the name Darkseid Phil, was sequestered. And in January, Phil launched his Patreon to mediocre success. In February, the number of patrons greatly rose to 74, paying out a total of $1,166. What influenced the surge? Wow, 74 idiots was actually giving this guy money. What the fuck is wrong with you? Video or a stream around a game, like Minecraft, that Phil had a change of heart with. Fans now understood that this was not so much a donation, but a guarantee, held by Patreon's milestone goals and Phil's own words. But it's not just a way of saying, here, take my money and thank you it's a way of investing you spoke in droves and said we don't just want pure raw gameplay anymore we want montages we want better edited content in addition to the raw gameplay and we yeah the same uh, kind of content that his slave labor of uh of non-paid editors do oh phil never change like special events you get what you want this had the added benefit of regaining some favor with his audience. He even began releasing edited montages around months or just his own game series. These, by their nature, were meant to compete against this is how you don't plays or at least capture some of the market. As they failed to compete with them or even just surpassed his raw gameplay videos, he reserved them to a Patreon tier. Also during this time, some videos criticizing DSP were being taken down. While DSP blames these takedowns on machinima acting in their own interest, viewers took it as DSP wanting to suppress the negative attention. As these takedowns happened in March, the channels willing to fight the claims were reinstated in April. But when they were reinstated, they were immediately claimed, meaning that they could remain up but all the money would go to machinima. This same month, DSP released a video of him performing various actions in front of a green screen. It only took one day for a scathing video that utilized the green screen. I love that. I want you to get a real job. <laughs> green footage to be released. <laughs> this included reference to Phil's decline in views, his alcoholism, and the copyright strikes applied to detractor channels. Additionally, Phil's diet of fast foods was coming back at him in full force. After all, current day, there is at least 17 and a half hours of footage of Phil consuming fast foods or foods of similar quality. 
My foot is incredibly swollen. You cannot tell from what I wanted to show you there. It's about, I'd say about 1.5 times the chubbiness of my other foot. So after doing a bunch of research online and after what everyone's been telling me, it sounds to me like I might have gout. Gout, or historically known as the disease of kings, is caused from a diet abundant of alcohol and red meats. This news spread quickly. He has gout? How do you, how, how does he have gout? Gout, copyright strikes, continued loss of viewerships, and the rise of the sons of Kojima were only the start of Phil's difficulties for 2015. His financial situation had gotten to the point that he was selling his statues that he could not accurately declare the quality of. The back of the box, as you can see, very durable when it moved, it even got a little nick in it, but it did absolutely no damage to anything inside because it has lots of styrofoam inside. His comb has damage. Gotta call that out. As poor Wait a minute, didn't he just say that the box may have been damaged but everything else on, on the inside was okay? And then he comes on and says, the, the comb is damaged, I just want to get that out, you know? Maybe he should take a look at everything in the box before he made the claim that everything in the box was okay. As Phil was with communication, there was one instance that him reaching out very well saved his life. They all these super... Uh-oh. Hold on. Hold on, everyone. I think I, I might have uh, some cops outside. Hold on. In the afternoon of June 24, 2015, someone called Phil's local police department claiming they had shot their parents and had a hostage. This was a swatting and the police had to respond. Luckily, Phil had caught ahead in fears that something like this would happen. Due to that, and because the caller did not identify themselves, they went in with the expectation that they were possibly not in danger. If not for these circumstances, this visit could have ended far worse. Shame on you! If you've ever made a this is how you don't play about me, if you ever decided to follow me, make a clone account on Twitter, do this childish shit on you. See, this is one of the things that I just hate about Phil. Instead of actually just tar you know, speaking about the people who actually did the swatting, he attacks everybody. And that's not cool because not everybody did the swatting. You don't punish the whole for what one does. And Phil, he doesn't realize that. And this is another reason why he just has more and more people hating on him. YouTube, if you thought it was funny to dox me, if you thought it was the DDoS attacks were funny, you almost got me killed. You. Yes, you. This shifting of blame and unjustly targeting the detractor community as a whole for the deranged acts of one person further soured relations with the detractors yet gained a bit of sympathy for those that were not in this vortex. Phil was frustrated not just at the detractors, but also the fact that the media was not picking up on the story, meaning that this message that the detractors as a whole were at fault was contained to his own platform. Little did Phil know there was more negative attention on him than ever before. His streams, tweets, forums, Patreon were all being monitored and archived. The following month, Phil on his own forums equated using the chat function on his live streams but not donating as loitering. But it's okay because he's lenient. As much as he claims to be, his audience from both sides were not convinced. Especially with the troubles on his Patreon. A new milestone goal at $1250 was Project 7 Rebirth. Quote, if this goal is reached, I will take away at least two days if not one to two full Ah, the, the, the Project 7 scam. Have somebody show for it by the end of the month, unquote. In no way, other than to drive Patreon donations, does this goal make sense. The original Project 7 was a failure by all aspects, and now Phil was here offering to relaunch the series with just two days of work. Likely due to this, viewers were asking John Rambo if he was playing a part in it. Coincidentally, John Rambo on his own channel released a skit perhaps related to the news. Hi, my name is John, and I'm special because I upload <laughs> videos to the internet. But being so important does have its dark side. In fact, it means that my life is much more difficult than everyone else's. This is why I've opened a Pay Me Tons account. It's an internet website that allows people like me to receive lots of creativity from people like you so you know he should have he's he should have thrown out the word positivity and 
contribution and support also that i'm not sure what it is there's something about john rambo i just cannot hate the guy the john john rambo is just too nice he is just too nice and it's a fucking shame that john rambo had to be burdened by uh being associated with somebody like phil burnell okay i'm going to take a quick break i gotta get something to drink my bottle is empty so i'm going to uh you know i'm just gonna stop recording and i'll be right back Okay, that took a little bit longer than I thought it would uh, would take. I had to take care of some stuff online. So let's uh let's actually continue on uh, with the video, shall we? Simply log in and transfer the entirety of your bank account into my Pay Me Tons account. I won't even get out of bed for less than fifty dollars. With Phil's relation with John Rambo in disarray and no feasible way to relaunch Project 7, in August he announced the project would not be coming to fruition and would be replaced by another goal. Similarly, his Alan Wake montage that the patrons voted for would also be cancelled after a single episode. I bet you those people who gave him that money for that montage, I bet you they're just feeling fucking awesome right now. You fucking deserved it. This guy has a track history a mile wide of fucking people over. Why the hell would you give this guy any more money? Oh, good. <laughs> the power went out. I'm not even kidding you. Almost as if it was retaliatory, fan art that Phil used in his videos was being used to illegitimately strike his channels. To avoid further strikes, he deleted the videos that included the art, which amounted to 600 videos off his channel. And because of this, he, uh, he actually lost a shit ton of views, if I remember right. This is like a huge view purge. For Phil, what he could have done it would have taken it would have taken time. Yes, it would have taken time. Uh, I'm pretty sure he could have edited those videos to remove that content. Granted, it would take a while, but at least he'd still have those views. He would have still been high up in the search algorithm. But no, he decided to uh, remove those videos, and by doing that, he basically shot himself in the foot. This amounted to around 4 million views removed, Ooh. and on Social Blade, it showed Ouch. that for the month of Holy August, he netted shit. a total of negative 1.37 million views. That's why... That's, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty big pothole, dude. ...that this deletion of views was causing a drop-off in his channel. In this near 44-minute, long-winded video, Phil recounts to his audience that it was Machinima that instructed him to delete those 600 videos that caused a small dent in his total... I do not believe that it was Machinima. Machinima is in the pro in the and well, they were in the business of making money. The, if you take away views, that means that money. I'm pretty sure that means that money's not going to be coming in because that's lost views. I don't think Machinima is going to be like, oh yeah, take away the thing that we want to make, which is money. Go ahead, those videos. Get rid of those videos. Nothing's going to happen. No, what Phil did was Phil stupidly acted out, excuse me, he stupidly acted out, and this was the consequence. There's one thing Phil always does, he acts out without looking at the consequences of his actions. Phil's getting these strikes, he decided to remove the videos, he lost the views, that was the consequence. He didn't think about it. Phil had a, lo uh, a, uh, a legion of viewers who enjoyed what he did. Phil shits on those viewers, not looking down the road of what could happen. He creates the detractors. The detractors didn't create themselves. Phil created them. Everything that happens to Phil is due to Phil's inability to look long term. Phil, had, Phil wanted to go and be the best at EVO. Phil took out countless uh, credit cards. Phil run run up debt. Phil, uh, without looking at the you know long term picture, Phil got into debt, had to declare bankruptcy. Viewership, but does not provide evidence of Machinima doing so because he claims he was instructed via a conference call. Then he claims an anonymous insider told Phil that this subtraction of views brought him down in the invisible total rankings and that YouTube was still using that archaic system of promoting videos via their channel's total accumulated views. The only thing is that all existing evidence works against him. The strongest evidence is in his social blade. 
contrary to what he is stating, he has had far worse drop-offs in views, and actually late 2015 were the most stable than they'd ever been. From November of 2011, he was losing over a million viewers on a daily basis. Yet now, in late 2015, he was worried about a small fluctuation of around 200,000 viewers. What's more, the deleted views against Phil's total views would have been so insignificant it would have no effect on his channel. Then again, there is a benefit in framing this natural downward trend as an emergency. But when this shit happens with YouTube and I have no control over it, I need your help. And if you really want to help, Patreon's the way. A dollar a month. Don't you just love that, ladies and gentlemen? He used to say that a dollar a month, he, you know, would be okay with him. He even used to say that about his tips. A dollar, a dollar's fine. A dollar's fine, ladies and gentlemen. A dollar is fine with me. It helps get me through. He now, without actually saying it, when somebody gives him a dollar, he fucking ridicules them. Well, if you give me a dollar, I only get back like 70 cents. You know, so if you want to really give me a dollar, make sure you give me at least a dollar fifty. That way, I can offset uh, uh, PayPal's fees. Why are you guys still giving him money? I, I, I'm seriously asking you guys. Why do you feel the need to continue to give this glorified beggar any money? This hardly helped his Patreon that was already being scrutinized due to his unfulfilling of initial goals, and more than just his patrons were distrusting of Phil. On Thanksgiving 2015, Phil uploaded an Ask the King episode where he answered fan questions. Fans seeking an update on John Rambo asked Phil where he stood with him. I hope that people don't take this the wrong way, but in life if you have something to, that you want to say or you have an issue with someone, all right, say it, bring it up, hash it out. If something happens and you don't bring it up and you let resentment build. Which I find to be fucking hilarious because anybody br who brings up their concerns with Phil, he blocks. The guy is a fucking coward. Now, granted, uh, yesterday on Twitch, not Twitch, on Twitter, sorry, or X, I was fucking razzing him like, like it wasn't even, like, like it was the end of days. And I actually was constantly kind of just instigate, you know, and I don't want to say instigating. I was implying that Cat was a surrogate mother for his mom. What do you mean, Jeff? Well, let's look at the fact. Cat cooks, Cat cleans, Cat pampers Phil Burnell. Phil Burnell did not want a wife. He wanted a, su a surrogate mother to literally do everything for him. You may not like it but it's the truth. When was the last time you could actually say that uh, when you see Kat, that you actually see her, that she's happy? She looks like a fucking prisoner in that house. Every time I see her on Raw Phil, which is a restreamer, I'm literally saying to the screen, blink twice if you're in trouble, Kat. Because she literally looks like she just does not want to be there. But Phil, he, he lassos the poor lady and he pulls her in because he wants to make a few bucks off of the presence of the soulmate. Stop. That's when relationships get ruined, right? Fans unstated with Phil's answer, like with the relaunch of Project 7, were reaching out to John Rambo on Thanksgiving to ask how he felt about Phil. Two days later, on November 28th, they, including Phil, were given their answer. Hello, I'm John. And I'm joined by Howard. Howard. <laughs> this was the same podcast that was used earlier in this video that talked about the production of Project 7. John Rambo decided to upload this to a separate channel and then deleted it about a day after. Then it was re-uploaded in perpetuity by channels archiving the material. And so in permanence was this about hour and a half podcast of evidence where John Rambo details his falling out. See, this is the one thing, you know, I like John Rambo. He, he seems to be a nice guy. But I don't think he wants to rock the boat too much. So, you know, he, he said what he said. And it, everything he said was fucking truthful. But I think it's just that he is too much of a nice guy. He did not want to hurt Phil's feelings. That's why he removed it. Me, I would have told, I would have told John, it's okay to say how you feel, dude. It's okay to say how you feel. Phil doesn't give a flying fuck how you feel. 
Why do you owe him that same? Why do you owe him any sort of respect? If I gave a flying fuck about what Bill has said to people, you think I would have uh, that I you know I would have stopped doing these videos? No. Bill needs to be constantly called out. You know that's and like I said, that's the one thing I kind of you know disagree with John Rambo over, which is not that much. Just that he is too nice and he did not want to hurt. I think he don't want it. They want to hurt Phil. If it was me, I would have said, "Hey, congratulations, John. You you did what you had to do. You had to get your point. You had to get your uh, point of view out there." With Phil, from Phil unfollowing him on Twitter to Phil drunkenly messaging him late at night while watching their let's plays and not calling him, even though John Rambo said he preferred that over text. It was all this, plus other minute issues like merchandise both parties invested in, Phil's susceptibility to trolling, his self-destructive tendencies, and other private elements that caused his falling out. At the end, John Rambo offers an olive branch by stating that a phone call could fix this. But Phil never did call. And so Phil lost touch with the last friend he had. Not even a month later, now closing 2015, Machinima informed Phil that they would no longer honor the $2 CPM contract and would instead swap to paying him with the raw ads, which would further <laughs> decrease his earning potential. Everything so appeared right. to be working against him, and the idea that was meant to breathe life into his channel did not come. What did come was something else. <laughs> oh, the camera's on! Hello, hello, and welcome. <laughs> I gotta say this. I gotta say this. Uh, this is gonna be my only time to possibly ever say this. Oh, I can always say it later, I guess. But anyway. Oh! The camera's on! It's been on the whole time! Hello! <laughs> oh, we're at that. We're at that point now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're we're at that time. Now this is one of the, one of the few times I think Phil could have really uh he could have really just used this to help himself. And yes, I, I'm actually giving Phil a little bit of credit here. You know, if he did the right thing, which he didn't. We all we all have those moments. We all have those moments that we've done something incredibly stupid. Phil literally came out, you know, right after it happened. Right after it happened. <laughs> oh, God, I can't believe I'm actually going to be trying to be nice to this piece of shit. Anyway, if he actually said, you know, came out and said, Hey, guys, uh, <clears throat> well, this is a little bit awkward. <laughs> you know, if he actually came out and said, you know, like, like, okay, what you saw, I was actually doing. And I apologize that you guys saw that. I honestly did not realize my camera was on. I apologize if you saw something and it upset you. I apologize. I I was, you know, I was watching a video and I did not realize my camera was still on. I apologize. And I take full responsibility for that. If Phil actually owned it the, the moment that it happened... Instead of playing the whole, oh, I was scratching my leg, or I was doing this, or I was doing that, or it was all, you know, instead of blaming everybody but himself, if he was actually just fucking honest, if he was just fucking honest and he goes, hey guys, I was, I was, you know, I was tending to personal needs, I'm sure he would not have had the sort of reaction that he did get because we all have those needs. We all have those needs. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I don't know why he acted so ashamed of it. Like I said, it's a human bodily function. It's been proven that that self pleasure is a way to help, uh, you know, it's a stress, it's a way to relieve, remove stress. If he was simply honest, this could have been, th instead of it becoming what it did, it could have been just a minor footnote. But no, Phil had to, he had to deny, 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 and then place blame. That's the way he always is, though. But, you know, like I said, I can't believe I'm actually trying to be nice 
about this, you know? I, I, I am I mad? Fuck no! I, this, out of all the shit that Phil has ever done, this has to be like at the very bottom of something to get upset at the guy about, you know? Unless, unless if you, unless you are some sort of person that gets triggered and gets angry at the fact that somebody is simply, uh, that they are simply, you know trying to deal with stress possibly you know it's like this is one out of all the things that he has done this should not be this shouldn't even be an issue oh the camera's on, <laughs> the, camera's on. the camera's been on the whole time huh hello Phil attempted to dismiss what he was doing <laughs> by saying he was doing quote unquote to various stuff like scratching his leg the bombardment of memes and other media will not allow <laughs> phil to dismiss this so easily <laughs> It was already clear that he was pleasuring himself on stream and forgot to turn the camera off. Keemstar, the owner of Drama Alert, a training drama channel at the time, quickly picked up the story. It was then that Phil came clean and admitted to what he was doing. After Drama Alert and the internet as a whole spread the news, Darkside Phil would be known, above all else, for this. The, 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 one, thing I just, the one thing that it, it, I don't want to even say it made it triggered me because it did, you know, like I said, I. I feel more sorry than anything about that incident. The one thing that really just makes me kind of like, whoa, you know, like he went from doing the act. Okay. He went from doing the act. Let's not fucking beat around the bush. He did the act. He went from doing the act to literally turning on the computer. He didn't wash his hands. He didn't change his clothing. He didn't, he was like, oh shit, the camera's on. Uh, he wasn't like, oh shit, the camera's off. Turn off the camera. Turn off the mic. Run out. Change his clothing. <laughs> he didn't do anything like that. Instead, he just like like it was just a normal day. <laughs> just a normal day. Holy shit! I, oh my god. He, he didn't try to clean up at all. I'm, I'm like, dude, clean up. <laughs> Please, if if he ever came to me and goes, "Hey Jeff, you know, like a handshake," I'd be like, uh, "Yeah, I know where the hand's been. No thanks, bro." <laughs> but yeah, that's the only thing. It's like it's like he literally he he went from doing the act straight to the stream. <laughs> me, if it was me, like I said, I'd be like, "Oh shit, camera!" You know, like you didn't see it. You didn't see it. Oh fuck. <laughs> a new nickname was passed around as DSP would be known as the guy. You don't need any other guy. Every inch of my dick is Because in theoretical conversation, when one introduces the subject of Dark Side Phil, the other participant would respond with, Is that the guy that pleasured himself on stream? Phil handled this remarkably well, making jokes <laughs> about it and accepting his new identity in stride. You're absolutely right. That's you what I'm known caught, for. You got exposed for doing that. That's, I got pro that's completely like... exposed. I'm shocked he never made a fucking shirt. <laughs> I'm shocked he never did anything to kind of, uh, to kind of, uh, oh God, what's the word? Uh, God, to profit. I'm sure, amazed he didn't do anything to profit off of that incident. I couldn't mention it right now. I couldn't mention it right now. He could have literally like made a hat with a graph or with like a little patch that says, "Oh, the camera's on," <laughs> or or have a shirt with it with his face, you know, and it's like, and then and then he's like, "Hello," <laughs> or something. You know, I'm just shocked he never tried to profit from that. I, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm utterly just shocked. His partners and Machinima were not so enthused and sought to take down any re-upload they could find of the event. Whatever goodwill <laughs> Phil had gained through the acceptance of this recent event was quickly lost. In this single post on his forums, he insults three different creators who have audiences larger than his. He calls Total Biscuits reviews overanalyzing, calls Jim Sterling's reviews reviews that fool you into thinking they're intelligent with fancy wording, and Angry Joe's reviews bloated with skits and cosplay for kitties to retain attention. The Which I find to be fucking hilarious because of the fact that Phil Burnell needs to dress up. 
I'm not a lady. I'm not a children's... Well, of course he's not a lady, but I'm not a children's entertainer. I swear, I'm a big boy now. I don't dress up. I'm a big boy. Yep, yep, yep. For $50, I wear stupid glasses. For $100, I put on a hat. For $150, I wear a vest. I like to play dress up. I'm not a, I'm not a children's entertainer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a big boy. I swear. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious, talking shit about Angry Joe. Granted, I don't like Angry Joe, but I'm not going to criticize Angry Joe for something I could possibly be doing. You know? like, no, that's hypocritical. He's a big boy, ladies and gentlemen. He's not a children's entertainer. Harry on top was the purpose of this post was to represent his own views as superior. Quote, or if you actually want an honest review from an honest guy who's played video games all his life, has a huge wealth of experience slash knowledge to draw upon and doesn't have any bias towards anything, you can watch my review." Unquote. Persisting on this path of self-destruction, the following month Phil made an Instagram post calling PewDiePie's new buck meaningless for brain-dead idiots. This produced a response from now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, whenever Phil Burnell likes to say, oh, I'm not a toxic person, it's them. They make me look bad. It's all of them. They make me look bad. No, Phil does this to him, to himself. Phil does this to himself, ladies and gentlemen. And when Phil Burnell, after this whole revolution that he's going, or renaissance, that he's going through, and he goes, I'm wondering why I can't get other people to, uh, to go on my podcast. This is kind of why. Because people like PewDiePie, you know, PewDiePie will probably get an email from Phil. Hey, PewDiePie, you know who I am? I'm Dark Side Phil. I'm having a renaissance. Everybody likes me. I'm going to give you a chance to go on my, my podcast. What do you say? PewDiePie, if he was fucking smart, he'd be like, go fuck off. And that's what everybody should say to Phil. Go fuck off. Phil needs to learn that his actions have consequences. PewDiePie, who simply responded with, quote, DSP upset he can't read, unquote. <laughs> the source of Phil's frustration was his continued bleeding of views. He was jealous, and over several posts on his forums, relentlessly defended the idea that not editing his Let's Plays is what made him popular, while simultaneously furious at being disadvantaged, stating that the only barrier between him and hiring an editor is money. There was something different in Phil going on here. A panic, a lashing out, a misrepresentation of the truth. Not to trick his viewership, but to try to fool himself. He was not concocting long-standing lies that would reach various people or form some campaign of misinformation or unverifiable fact. He was arguing with individual members on his forums with multi-paragraph long responses. As the users had grown accustomed to, Phil was blaming this is how you don't plays for his failings, calling them slanderous. A user of his chat was even banned for stating that they enjoy their job and wouldn't prefer streaming. Phil was fighting with the very concept that the loss of viewership was his fault. It's a wonder what this fight with reality was doing to him. Out of his continued desperation, he was back on Twitch asking for more paid subscribers. Phil's loss of viewership had him left with the most dedicated supporters and detractors watching his streams. The worst part for Phil was this balancing act between dismissing detractors and appeasing supporters. Quote, I seriously need to start convincing people that YouTube isn't going to support me anymore, so they need to pledge a Patreon and or sub give bits here. Because at this rate, it's a joke. I'm on pace to make half as much in December this year as I did last year, playing four new games. And I think I mentioned this in the previous video, but that's why, if I did, I can't recall if I said it, but YouTube was never meant to be seen as a stable source of income. It just wasn't. The fact that Phil had a, at least, what was it, two good years, three good years, or whatever it was, $170,000. He should have put that away for a rainy day, but he did not. He decided to start buying stupid fucking statues. He bought a BMW. He bought a house. He did not look at the long-term picture. And th this is what happens. Phil, you know, Phil, along with a lot of people on YouTube, think that the YouTube is just going to be there forever. That the, the money is going to always roll and it's just going to keep rolling in, and it doesn't. There, th there will always be a final day for everybody. 
Phil Burnell will have his final day on YouTube before you you know he just doesn't get any more money. There'll be a final day when PewDiePie just does not get a lot of money. It, it it's a natural foregone conclusion. It's just that it hits everybody at different periods. That's why it really doesn't bother me because you know number one I have a job that I love, and number two I I don't get money from YouTube anyway, so I can do this as a hobby. And if I want to put out one video a week, I could. If I want to put out no videos, I could. If I want to put out 10 videos, I can. I do not feel beholden to YouTube. Whereas Phil, you know, he literally feels like he needs that money now because he literally has nothing else he can really do. Just got a notification my bank account is overdrawn. Luckily, my machinima payment is literally coming through today. Unquote. To add salt to the wound, the infamous clip of Phil was strong in circulation even at the end of 2016. <laughs> that face. 2017 started just as bad for Phil, as he announced that he had been renting his condo out in Connecticut, but that was no longer the case. More would be lost this year than any other. On February 26, 2017, Phil participated with his viewers in a game of Quiplash 2. A game with pre-established questions that could be answered in any way. The goal is to win the favor of the competitors with the most compelling answer. This quickly delved into the memes both service level and personal around Phil. For example, his seal laugh or ack ack ack. TSP tries a KFC gold oh. chicken or make more ad revenue than Phil. Calvark <laughs> 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 or ack 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 ack. <laughs> They're both good. None of these had any major effect as Phil played along with the roasts. It wasn't until a player shoehorned in an answer that caused chaos. Leanne, I don't even know what that means. Leanna's fake engagement ring. Huh? What does that mean? I never gave her an engagement ring. So I don't know what that even means. I don't understand. Is there something that the detractor circles about a fake engagement ring? What are you talking about? I didn't give her an engagement ring. What? People are weird. Okay, what does that even mean? There's some stupid Great. inside joke that I don't understand. The points for you. What does that mean? <laughs> it won and it makes no sense whatsoever to anyone who's not into an inclusive circle jerking circle. That made no sense at all. What does that mean? Is there actually like a, some kind of a, a, a joke about an engagement ring? Huh? Leanna posted it on her own Twitter. What are you talking about? It's about one of her Twitter pictures. What are you talking about? That's. I'm not sure this was. I think this was just before Leanna left him. He should have put a ring on her finger. That was basically her way of. You know, I, well, I don't want to say speak in like definites i'd want to speak, you know for sure but i'm pretty sure that could have been her way of saying to phil hey phil i want to get married hilarious because that just shows how mind fucked and stupid the people are who do this shit these detractor idiots because no human would know what the fuck they're talking about it's some completely inside joke they made up for themselves that no one would know anything about at all <laughs> it doesn't make any sense it makes zero fucking sense and yet it ends up being the big winner at the end of the game. That's so fucking stupid. As was revealed to Phil through a video game, Panda Lee had been wearing a fake engagement ring to her job. Dissatisfied in the relationship and the lack of progress towards marriage, this was her way of lashing out and participating in the drama on Twitter. Quote, Oh shit, he knows about the fake engagement ring I wear to work that I wear all the time? How could he have known? Unquote. Panda Lee then posts the ring itself, captioned with Ringgate 2017. Panda Lee allegedly also took off work to experience the live drama that was unfolding. With her displeasure with Phil near its climax, it was a surprise they did not separate there. In the limelight instead was Machinima. With the apocalypse in full swing, earnings down and the company model a complete failure, they had less support to answer creators who were feeling the brunt of the loss of rad revenue. Phil, being one of these creators, reached out, but Machinima was slow to answer. Th this and so he was emailing CGI. not just former employees that had been fired without his knowledge, but emergency contacts meant for dire situations. Oh god! Oh god. That's what when on February 28th, a Machinima employee reached out to Phil and gave him the basic advice to increase his audience retention and kindly to not message other departments. Phil's full, alleged response was locked in on Machinima's request to not message other departments. 
Dale used his history with the company as a reason to act in the way he pleases and demands better treatment. If he is not treated better, he states he is better off not working with them. I'm not, I think, I think, oh, I can't recall, but I think this is where Machinima basically says, okay, goodbye. <laughs> you know, like, th th this is, this is how, this is how his ego has always been. It's always been Phil. Phil has always been number one. Everybody else can go fuck off. As Phil, as long as Phil gets what he wants, he can care less about anybody else. Machinima, more than happy to oblige, released Phil from the contract. <laughs> After all, per their contract, they were only losing money with Phil because he was earning 100% of the ad revenue. Phil was relating this moment to when he got fired from his office job in 2010. As seen per Fred Fox capturing of Phil's Twitch chats, Phil was acting as if he was blindsided by his own requests, stating, quote, There is no two or one month notice. That is complete BS, lol, but this situation is pretty unique. Unquote. In a video released shortly after, Phil dissects his separation of Machinima, then dissects it again and again and again, then loses his train of thought, thanks his followers, asks for donations, and again restates what has been overtly established, yet never provides a satisfactory answer. That's why his video is nearly two hours long to explain that the contract with Machinima has been terminated. And as per the description, quote, I cannot give all the details, but in this video I explain what's going on. Unquote. This is all beyond minutia, that besides Phil's uncredibleness or dishonest nature is why few would ever care for his side of the events. His long-windedness buries his own reasoning or retelling of events even further than his several uploads a day do. For any controversial moment, Phil is certain to extend what should be a clear Phil could have literally turned it into like, turn, you know, explained it in like less than a minute. He could literally tur have turned on the camera and go, hey guys, I fucked up. I gave, I basically said, uh, I told Machinima, if you don't give me what I want, then maybe I'm going to go somewhere else. And they said, okay, goodbye. And he could have just said that. But no, he has to fucking turn everything into a gigantic molehill or anthill or whatever the correct term is. He could have literally just said, hey, I fucked up. I gave them ultimatum. They said, go get fucked. Boom, done. You know. And concise response into a multi page long essay or hour long video. It took about 10 days or so for Phil's channel to be fully released. And then it took about an additional week for him to fight various content ID claims himself, as would normally be the responsibility of Machinima. Phil was quick to find a different multi channel network to partner with. This time it was Curse. Unlike Machinima, who was trying to inflate the numbers, Curse did not give Phil a 100% cut of ad revenue, nor was he in a managed partnership. This means that they would not be responsible for his 30 or so content ID claims that he was getting a day on his 40,000 uploaded videos. Ouch. The ongoing developments of 2017 were scarcely predictable. In April, Phil submitted to Panalee's request and per her Instagram post were now engaged. The detractors' persistent monitoring allowed them to find the ring almost immediately. It was one that Panalee personally liked on her Black Current account, which is the name of her soap making business. Detractors, tracing this back to Amazon, found that Phil had spent on the lower end for this ring. A testament to his detractors' obsession and or Phil's dwindling finances. By May, Phil had concluded a two-month-long talk with a different network that intruded themselves as Spoltavi. They offered Phil a cut similar to Curse and a managed partnership. And while he found Poltavi unprofessional in their exchanges, he found their offer to be too enticing to give up and severed his partnership with Curse though Phil had made a great mistake. Poltavi's unprofessional nature was foreboding, and they quickly turned around and disregarded the partnered element. With all this happening in the background, the sons of Kojima found out through Phil's channel source page that he had a new partnership, not with Curse or even Poltavi as Phil understood it. He was partnered with an entirely new network known as Laveria Media, and as revealed, was using Poltavi as a front to disguise their own network and shady practices. You would think that somebody who has a business major would would do some thorough research into these uh organ into these potential uh, partnerships that he enters. But like always, he literally just he just thinks you know he just acts he he's like pure instinct, pure instinct instead of actually taking time to uh, have you know researched 
these businesses. See, this is where, in my opinion, this is where it could have helped Phil if he was actually nice to the big name uh, YouTubers, the 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 PewDiePies, the Keem stars. Well, well, Phil and Keem are now butt buddies, I guess you could say. Um, you know, PewDiePie, N Ninja, all these people that he has literally shit on over the years if he actually was nice to those people over the years i'm pretty sure he could have reached out you know hey ninja or mr beast for example even though mr beast is having his own trouble now hey mr beast i just got released from machinima i'm having a lot of problems do you have you know like do you, who would you recommend as some sort of like a, a part, you know channel manager or whatever that's called and then they possibly could have been like hey here is here's a list of a few of these uh you know these management companies you know i'll i'll, I'll you know i'll give you my opinion of each of them and if you need me i can even i can even throw out a word for you you know that's if phil was actually nice to people but no phil once again not being able to look you know, see, you know, see the road through the forest or whatever the correct term is. He treats people like shit and he doesn't look at the long term. Because of this, he lost his partnership with Machinima and he was literally just panicking. He was grabbing at whatever he thought would stick. The CEO was found to be just a student at a university. Phil, understanding his mistake, sought to leave his new network. The sons of Kojima allegedly even got the CEO of Liberia Media on for one of their podcasts. This was a confusing set of events for everyone involved. While all this was going on, Phil was in the process of purchasing a new car. For the past six years, he had been leasing a BMW. In the last three years, he had only driven the BMW 6,000 miles and so never changed the oil. You know, BMW, you're supposed to get maintenance for free no matter what. That's part of the deal. That's why the car is so expensive. And they never, uh, <laughs> they never contacted us to get it changed. Phil's audience long understood he was financially illiterate, but hadn't been yet exposed to how illiterate he was with cars or the contracts related to them. That's why whenever other content creators discover both, it makes for an interesting watch. Uh, in three years, we only drove the car 6,000 miles. So if that gives you any idea... Hey, what? He leased a car for... Okay, now I'm going to go on record. Okay, I'm going to go on record. I own a car. I'm not going to say what it is, but I own a car. Uh, it was actually a car that belonged to my mom before she passed away. Uh, the car is used, so I, you know, I do not drive it that often. I, I actually have a fear of driving. It, it, it's actually, you know, I, I get very bad anxiety when I do drive. It's it's to the point like if I have to go out like if I drive and I have to go like a long distance at the at the least you know I get a little bit of anxiety at the worst I'm like literally breathing hard <laughs> you know like I'm I'm having panic attacks and it's because until my mom passed away I, 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 I've always been a fan of public transportation or walking. Now, you may not believe it, but I walk a shit ton. I don't look it, but I walk a fucking lot. It's just, it's just, it doesn't really show up on me, but I do walk a lot. Um, but yeah, so I don't drive the vehicle that often, but like at least, I, I wouldn't even say I, like in, in, in a year I get 6,000 miles. It's probably not even half that. I, I only I only really drive it to keep the battery charged, so I drive it like twice or three times a week, depending on the weather. And then like every year to year and a half, I'll take it in for oil change. So like I, I I'm not going to jump on Phil for lack of car knowledge because I don't have it either, you know. So I, this is one of the few times I'm not really going to raz on the guy. Although I will, the only time I will raz on him is the fact that he was having money problems or whatever, or even with like John and Howard, and he bought an expensive car. And as a, by the sounds of it, we're about to hear about his poor contract negotiating or whatever for a car. Four or five hundred dollars a month, and he's only drove it six thousand miles in th three years.
okay, so 6,000 miles for th in three years, and the contract's like four to 500. I'm guessing that's not good. I'm guessing that's not good. Uh, the vehicle, Like I said, the vehicle I have, it was pre-owned already. It was used. So we didn't even, you know, we bought it outright. <clears throat> but I'm guessing that because he doesn't drive it that often, and he's paying, you know, that much for it, I'm guessing that's a bad thing. <laughs> what? Cherry Dude's like, oh, you could have engine damage. No, Cherry Dude, that's not how it works. BMW has a diagnosis computer inside of the car <laughs> that tells you when things go wrong. So if there were engine damage... <laughs> oh, my God! Hey, this guy is a living meme! No, there is... It's not... BMW has diagnosis computer in the car, okay? <laughs> and they never... I'm not good. Like I said, I'm not really going to dunk on him because of that. All, all I can say is, like, if you think it's time to take your car in, take it in. You know, take it in, make sure that it's okay. I, I kind of do the, I, I, I do what I can do when it comes to like my knowledge. I check the oil. I make sure that's still good. The oil is still a good color. So, you know, I, I make sure that it's the coloring. It's like a clearish color. It's not dark and clouded and gunky or anything. I make sure that the tires, I always go to a nearby tire company because I got, uh, just before my mom passed away in 2019, it was, uh, we got new tires, and because of that, we always get complimentary service on those tires. So I always make sure the tires are, you know, properly inflated. Uh, they're rotated. When it comes to fluids, I make sure that, you know, I try to make sure everything is good. I try to do the best of what I can with my knowledge, you know. For, uh... Huh. They never contacted us to get it changed. Why would they contact you to change your oil? <laughs> Destiny, the person reacting to Phil's explanation, calls Phil the salesman's stream. Wanting to help Phil out, Destiny jumped onto Phil's stream and began typing in his chat, attempting to provide financial advice. Phil, of course, ignored this, and on his forums he posted, quote, Destiny, a Twitch streamer who I never even heard of before a two weeks ago, came into my chat and practically begged me to stop what I'm doing and talk with him. What the fuck can this guy tell me about buying cars that I don't already know? This guy probably didn't know I went to school for finance." Unquote. Phil, still in the mindset of discussing the drama around the networks, was talking about it on- And this is where I- this is where, like I say, he doesn't look at the picture. He Apparently he knows who Destiny is. You have a big name uh, streamer or content creator or somebody reaching out to you saying, hey, Phil, I may be able to help you. The normal person would at least be willing to hear them out. Hey, Jeff, I hear you're, you don't know that much about cars. Here's some, here's some you know, introductory level stuff that may help you. I'd be like, okay, hey, what's the worst, what's the worst that can happen? I can hear the guy out. He may have information that I may not be aware of that I could actually that could actually help me. Phil Burnell, he treats the guy like shit. This is this all goes to Phil's ego. Just because he went to a fine a school for finance or whatever he said it was, doesn't mean he's fucking smart. You can have a master's degree and still be a fucking idiot. Stream. I trusted YouTube system to work properly, okay? Here's what happened. So that was Monday, I think Monday morning or whatever. Okay. I think, uh, uh-oh. Hold on one second, everybody. Oh, was this I'll be right back. I'm getting an important phone call. Oh, no, this, oh, okay. Folks, I've got a family emergency. It came out. This is, uh, this is where he, uh, basically, uh, where Panda Lee was having a panic attack. And Phil had his infamous give her a pill and leave her on the side of the on the corner of the street. Oh boy, what a lot of stuff here to unpack. Now I understand that they were broke that they had already broken up. If I understood correctly, I think she was still living with him at this time. Now, granted, they made their their relationship was in tatters, but. I still feel that, in my opinion, if I had, a let's say, an ex-girlfriend who was living with me, which would never really happen because the other bedroom is not my studio. <laughs> but anyway, if I had an ex-girlfriend and she was still living with me, and she was she had nobody, you know, because, nobody here because I dragged her ass across the country with me, 
I would honestly feel like it would be like a moral obligation for me to take help take care of her because of the fact she's still living with me and we have that history. She has no family here. You know, like I, I feel like it would be my, you know, like it would it'd be my responsibility to help her get better. You know, she may still hate me, but I would still feel like it, it's my responsibility to help her get better because of the fact that I was responsible for her coming all the way across the goddamn country. What does Phil do? Give her a fucking pill and leave her on this corner. Like, dude, dude, how can you fucking say that? This is just one of the many reasons. You chalk this up to like reason number three, three, five, six, two, nine point one of why I fucking hate this guy. He doesn't understand that people, you know, people are not just people. They they are they they have needs. People can have breakdowns. You know, like how does he not fucking realize that? All the shit that he has gone through with the detractors, with the DDoS, with the swatting, that shit does stuff to people, you know, like, you know, the thought of losing your money, your, your, you know, your electricity or whatever. How is it that he can have these emotions? He cannot have the same emotions for people that he knows. He should know, like, he... There was times that he openly said that he had anxiety, that it was living in the back of his head at that moment. Handily give her a fucking pill, leave her on the corner. What? What? Out of nowhere, and uh, I have to deal with it now. So guess what? Sadly, the podcast has to end. I can't finish my story right now. Phil had received a call from Pandalee's job. She had experienced an anxiety attack and was being driven to the hospital by paramedics. Phil then met her at the hospital after picking up her car. He found her in a sedated state, and after a three-hour long wait, they released her with no additional treatment. Frustrated at the lack of attentiveness, Phil said, So now she's zonked out, she's sleeping, you know, in the room because of, you know, everything. She's still on the pills, the pills made her all loopy or whatever. So, I mean, we did, on the way home, I stopped and we got food. We grabbed, like, chicken sandwiches, and we just ate them, and now she's sleeping. So, so that's what happened. Unbelievable. Like, <laughs> Oh, oh my god. The thing is, I know if this ever happens again, I'm gonna tell him you are not allowed to bring her to the hospital. No. No, you get no permission to fucking do it. You can't give her a pill, you wanna give her a pill, give her a pill, and that's it, because you're just gonna waste our time again. You, you didn't help us at all. To some, this looked like Phil was dismissing Pandalee's issue. Dude, how can you fucking say that? Yeah, you may you and her may be broken up, but still she's a human being. You know, like that act that attitude is somebody like something you'd give like for an arch enemy not a person that you spent the last few years with dude, like that's fucking cruel man fucking cruel yeah pandalee wasn't perfect but just to say i'll just give her a pill you know like like what the fuck dude Jews are minimizing them which is what he was now getting backlash for what they didn't know is that phil and pandalee had broken up some time before the anxiety attack which is also a possible factor that may have induced it he announced this at the end of May. Now, for the first time ever, Phil was in Washington in complete isolation. Mockingly, a few dating adverts were made to remedy his newfound loneliness. Then, there was a song request. 89.7 KACC, we got a dedication in. These, these kids and their names, I swear. So, Dark Side Phil wants to dedicate a song to Panda Lee. He wants to dedicate Baby Come Back by Player? I, I don't know what to say, guys. Okay, so anyway, here's Baby Come Back by Player, and they actually wanted me to say Baby Come Back. Ack, 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 ack. Baby Come I, Back. I don't get it. I, I really don't get it with these kids. But yes. Uh. Darkside Phil, here's your dedication to Handle in many ways, Phil was defeated, but he would not be Phil if he wasn't persistent in getting others to dislike him. On his Twitch chat, a place only the current viewers are meant to see, Phil in jealousy of popular creator iJustine typed, quote, iJustine is busy getting gangbanged by EA executive staff all weekend. The only fucking reason she was actually hired in the first place, lol, unquote. Prominent detractor accounts took this screenshot and were quick to not only spread it on Twitter, but also tag iJustine in it. To much surprise, I just didn't responded. Quote, why don't you stop spamming everyone? He clearly has issues. Unquote.
Yeah, I, I, I can understand her point of view, but if it was me or my wife or whatever, you know, I'd be fucking pissed if that's what somebody said about me or my wife, you know, like, like, you don't even fucking know me and you make accusations like that. You, Bill likes to talk about slander and li liable, liable and everything. You would think that this, you know, him, that him claiming that she was get, being uh, sexually assaulted, I guess you could say. You, you would think that that is something that, you know, that could be slander or liable. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, like, Phil, Phil has had a, a track history of putting his foot in his mouth, but he never really likes to admit to that. However, he will, like, duty streams. Oh, my God. For some reason, well, we know why he's up fixated on duty. It's because of the fact that duty used to make more than Phil. But the fact is, Phil has said some pretty heinous shit. Phil did have issues. For 10 years, Phil has had a dream job and meant to provide steady, easy income, while allowing one to work within their own set hours. Phil, on the other hand, had nothing to show for his near decade-long residence. The stinging fact was he lost far more than he gained, and for a period he seemed starkly aware. Quote, I haven't had real in-person social interaction on a regular basis since like 2007, before YouTube started. Once I started YouTube, that all went away. That's part of the sacrifices I keep bringing up to make this work. I can't have regular friends with the amount of time I put into this job. When I lived in CT, I had tons of money. As soon as I moved out here, poof, gone." Unquote. It is clear that he regrets his move, but he cannot accept it is his fault. That's when people ask if he maintains social relationships. Quote, I talk to tons of people on a daily basis. A user then asks, I mean like relationships or friends outside of Twitch. Phil responds, I don't have time for in-person friends. I'm constantly working. You realize I haven't had a day off since my time off in July, right? This is my life, and has been for quite a long time before I moved out here. Then it got better for three years living with my- Even if Phil, you know, could, you know, like, go out and talk to people. Let, let's say that the ability, that the demand to make content was lessened. I don't think Phil has the uh, people skills anymore to actually go out and interact with people. Now, I'm not saying that as as Mr. Perfect. I I am not. I per I I lack those skills also. I lack those skills also. Uh, when when like I go to work, you know, I have no problem talking to. My coworkers. My coworkers are some of the most awesome people I've ever worked with. However, once I get off work and I'm by myself, I I just do not have that uh that the social skills. I talk to people via like text messages, like on the computer. I can reply to people, but like face to face, if it's not work related, I I just can't do it. I cannot do it. I think that's where Phil is at this point. I don't think Phil has the ability to uh, to basically, you know, interact with people. He he's been he is so far out of that realm that it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fucking impossible for him, like it is for me. And I I'm not perfect. I refuse to say that I'm perfect. Uh, I people say hi to me. Yeah, like say I go to the grocery store. There's a grocery store right across the street where I live that I, you know, I will stop off at every day after work to get dinner. And I understand that they're being nice. I do. I just cannot, uh, I cannot, you know, like, the, the you know, I cannot really open, you know, have open conversations with people. Uh, People, you know, like, they'll be like, hey, how's it going? You know, and, and I have, like, fucking short answers. I'm, I'm fine. Or the one thing that really, and, and my coworkers say, oh, they're just being nice when they say it. The thing that really just kind of gets to me, it's when they'll be like, oh, you know, like, well, like, I'll go to the hot deli, you know, to get, like, some Chinese food or whatever. And they'll be like, what will you have, hun? They'll be like, no, it's a lady that says it. What will you have, hun? 
And that, that just freaks me the fuck out. You know, it's, it's like, huh? You know, what will you have, hon? You know, like, and, and to me, it, it's weird, but, you know, and I can understand that they're just being nice, but I, I just lack those social skills, you know. That's where Phil is right now. Max. But now I'm back to square one, really. Unquote. As recoiled as Phil was, dealing with persistent copyright strikes and whatever else his life brought him, he clung on to whatever was left of his following. Typical in periods lacking interest, trolls are more likely to find entertainment from consuming one another. The reality of communities like the one that works against DSP is that they are far more nuanced that they lead on. From the outside looking in, the detractor community is powerful in coordinating their campaigns against Phil. In actuality, it is very divided. Some hate Phil, some just want to catch up periodically. The majority don't interact in any way. These differences create cyclical arguments, for example those wanting no universal interaction with Phil. Some reasons may lie in entertainment, as Phil's passive failings tend to be the most entertaining. They could also just be aware that putting themselves out personally will lead to ridicule in a space that exploits any weakness. Or they simply feel sympathetic to his plight. On the other end, you'll have those that want interaction with Phil. These can be small by typing messages in his chat to, to get a reaction or requesting a song on the radio. That is the simple basis of trolling, the overall effects are minimal and hardly controversial. Then you have those that feel personally slighted by Phil and seek revenge. This is where the illegitimate copyright strikes And once again, this is what I'm talking about. I do not encourage you to do this. He is not worth going to jail. Me? My, I'm more, I just don't want the guy on fucking online anymore. He needs to get off the internet. He needs to get a fucking job. He needs to, to put that degree that he likes to lord over everybody. You know, I got a degree. Good. Go fucking use it. You know, why are you telling us? Go you fucking use it. You're supposed to be smarter than everybody. You got a degree, didn't you? Go fucking use it. You know, like, I just. I just don't want Phil online, but I'm not going to fucking, you know, do something, you know, like that could put me in jail for it. Fuck no, I'm not that stupid. Come from. They want Phil to fail in any way and few strategies are out of their purview. Truly, the only defense in the space is self-awareness and anonymity. These members lack both. And the most interesting part is all these people inhabit the same space. Whether it be the forums or Phil's chat, they can be seen arguing endlessly. It is only a community out of convenience and nothing else. That's why Amy looked like the sons of Kojima would sit on top of this virtual hierarchy. But in actuality, the only thing they have claimed to is their- Okay, so that is it for this video. These videos are broken into like one hour chunks. Hold on, let's switch back over to here. There you go. So that is it for this video video i'm going to get it all edited edited together and everything and you know yeah so as always you know i hope you like what you watched uh we learned a little bit more about phil we learned but a lot of this stuff i i was already kind of aware of like with panda lee and the the uh strikes and everything a lot of what was new for me was the stuff at the very beginning with the fgc everything else i've already kind of aware of but still, it's nice to go down memory lane. I And I'll still go on record and say I feel bad about John Rambo and Howard and respect the pact. And, oh, God, I can't recall the guy who made him the computer. Those guys did not deserve to be treated like this from Phil. You know? But, yeah. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, stay tuned for next week. Next week or week weekend. Uh, unless I have some free time after work. Uh, will be part three, which will cover hour number three. And then after that, I think I have one part left, which is like only 40 minutes, if I remember correctly. So we're about halfway through at this point. I hope you've enjoyed my commentary. If, if you know, if not, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just, I just like giving my thoughts about stuff. But anyway, I will see you next time. And that was, or this has been so far, my uh, reacting to the DSP documentary. This is part two. So I will see you all later. My name is Jeff, a.k.a. G-Curse, wishing you all a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Peace out.